Welcome to the Fastest 30 Minutes in Broadcast, Living with Loving Me, where I'm your host, Prophet Johnson. Genesis chapter number 37 and verse number 12. This is where Joseph becomes a slave, you know what I mean? Um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and now you got Joseph, and um, you know the story of Joseph. He's favored by his father, given a coat of many colors, and his brothers are out there in the field in Shechem, and He's asked to go check on his brothers by his father and go and find out that his brothers are down in Dothan. You know, they're having a good boogie-woogie party. And um, uh, chapter number 37 and verse number 12, and his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem. Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, I am here, or here I am. And he said unto him, or he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well. See whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks. And bring me word. See, Jacob knew his sons, and he's saying to Joseph, go down there and check them out because, you know, they're probably down there rendezvousing a little bit. If you got that many brothers, you know, that's a lot of brothers, 12 tribes of Israel, you know, and um, he's going to check them out because his father's concerned. You know how it is you got children. You know your children. And so um, he said, bring me word. Let me know if it's well. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem, and a certain man, I read this the other night, was wandering um, in the field, and, and Joseph asked him, and, and he said, uh, who are you looking for? And he said, my brethren, have you seen them? And he said, um, yeah, they're down in Dothan. And Joseph went to Dothan to check them out down there to see what's going on. And uh, when they saw him fall off, they conspired to kill him. And they said, here come the dreamer. You know, we won't get rid of him and see what happened to his dreams. And they said, come, let us kill him. And you're going to see that next part where I cut off the other night there is Reuben heard it. You know, Reuben's like a big brother that's got a little bit of heart. You know, he care. And even though Reuben messed up with it <laughs> later on with one of the fathers, ha <coughs> And he said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit in the wilderness and lay no hands on him. Now you notice who's going to cast him into the pit. The ones that is of his very own genealogy, the one that's close to him. And then he goes on to say he might and, um, and, and, and lay hands on and lay no hands on him. When verse number 22, he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father. Now. They're saying, we'll get rid of him and um, rid him out of our hands and don't worry about it, deliver him to the Father, whatever. And verse number 23 is what we're picking up. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to, unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat. Now, notice the first thing that they did. They stripped him of his covenant. See, because Joseph's uh, coat was a type of Christ symbolic in a way, you see, and 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 that coat rep represented the covenant, as with God and Noah, betwixt God and man, with Joseph and his family, and the covenant of God, and they took his coat of many colors and they stripped out of him out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into the pit. Now notice. From the pit to the palace. He's cast into the pit first of all. Okay? So what does the enemy do? The enemy want to bring you to your lowest common denominator in life. He wants to humiliate you to the point to where you don't feel like going on, feel like moving on. They say that so many people, especially a lot of veterans, commit suicide every day. And... Uh, when you look right now, again, what do you see in the world in today's time? The rise in the resurgence, the resurgency of COVID-19 coming back again. Well, what is that? that? That's a pit for the whole world, old 19, don't you think? 
where they're not going back in the pit. So the first thing that the enemy wants to do is to eliminate your presence. He don't want your presence to be around because your presence is a threat to his work or to his kingdom. This is why certain people uh, that are religious, you know, certain saved, sanctified folks that are religious, they don't want you in certain Hollywood positions, okay, because Hollywood is sick. They don't want you in certain theaters, not even on certain jobs. You don't go there talking that religious Jesus speaking in tongues stuff on no job where you got a bunch of devils and a bunch of heathens, you know, that's rocking and rolling, drinking and smoking and, and, and stanking and pranking. Why? Because you're not going to fit in. So, so what do you see now? You see that the first thing they're doing is to eliminate his presence. After they eliminate his presence, they're going to bring a council together. What does the enemy do? The enemy bring counsel against God anoint, God's anointed. You see, that's why the Bible says with wise counsel, a good counsel, make war. No man going to war having counted up the cost, you know, of the battle. So you don't go to battle. If you got, if you got a, a group of um, 100 men coming down a trail and um, you have only um, 30 men, all right, can you defeat that 100 men coming down the trail? Well, Prophet Johnson, I don't know. Well, of course, you don't know, but I do. What is the answer? Of course you can defeat them. How? 30 men kill 100 men? Easy, yeah. What are you going to do? You're going to set up an ambush. That's right. You're going to line 15 men up on one side, 15 men up on the other side. They're coming down the trail. One going to shoot and all of them going down. Okay, you might lose a few, but you, they, they're going to lose because you, you're ambushing the guys. You'll take out about 50 of them before they can even get good shots off at you. <coughs> Here it is. And they sat down. Now, watch what they did. After they threw them in the pit. Now, now this is the nerves of people. And this is what happened every, uh, I'm not going to get into certain things, but I'm just not going to. This is what happened when the enemy seeks to destroy a child of God, rather in the streets. Or, like I use the word, I, I I'm not going to get into it, but I have to use the police scenario, uh, the judge's scenario. Once they catch you, beat you, shoot you, kill you, lock you up, and throw you in jail, then they go back and they go to church on Sunday and they thank God for the ability to lock you up, beat you up, shoot you, and kill you, and throw you in jail, and this is what they do. And they sat down to eat bread. <laughs> you see it there? They're, they're, they're sitting down to eat now. They have no conscience, none whatsoever here hardly. And they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites uh, came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and bombs and mirth, carrying, going to carry it down to Egypt. Now notice that God has a divine plan. While they're concocting to get rid of Joseph, uh, God is letting the Ishmaelites come down, uh, you know, the road, and, and there's Joseph in the pit. So what the brothers don't know is that all this is already orchestrated. What would make the Ishmaelites come down the road at that time after they done threw him in the pit and now they're sitting down eating lunch. And Judah said unto his brother, and what profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? You know, you're not, we're not going to get anything out of it except the conscience. You know, and they not, don't have too much of it at the time. You notice that people, when they are in the act or in the process of the sin, a lot of them, they don't have a conscience at that time. Uh, rapists, murderers, uh, uh, robbers, whatever, thieves. Uh, thieves never have a conscience. Uh, all the congress don't have no conscience. They just don't. And uh, some stranger even, I mean, they lie. I, I don't have no time for that. But they don't have a conscience during the time or during the process of the act. And when it's all over, they may have a conscience. Look at the uh, killers in the world, um, you know, the BTK killers and all the others out there and, um, that done killed people and did things that are just crazy. And they don't have that conscience there. And some people don't have a conscience even when you let them borrow money. 
they don't have no conscience to pay you back, especially your family. And they said, come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hands be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh, in his brethren were content. So they said, okay, well, we'll live with that, you know. At least they had a little debate, and Judah stepped in, and, uh, you know, it, it said, don't kill him. Uh, of course, all of these are um, Judah and Ishmael and all these guys, the Ishmaelites and all of them, these are dark-skinned people, okay? And no, they're not white people. Then, that's right. Then they're passed by uh, Midianites, merchants, men. And they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Now, remember, Jesus was sold for 30 pieces. Joseph is sold for 20 pieces. Um, the, the three represents the Trinity. The two represents the covenant. So Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and um, he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whether shall I go? Uh, the child is not, and I, whether shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed it, uh, and killed a kid. Reuben was trying to save him, you know. And um, when Reuben gets back from rendezvousing or running around and Judah already done got the game together and said, let's get rid of him before Reuben, Reuben gets back and find out. So Reuben gets back and looks, and Joseph's not there. And so, you know, he's finally sold, and they took, take his coat. And, um, and they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the blood in the goat, uh, dipped the, dip the, <laughs> dip the blood in the goat, and uh, dipped the coat in the blood, Okay. They dipped the coat in the blood, and they sent the coat of many colors, um, and they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it is thy son's coat or not. I'll read it right. This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. Uh, come on now. Uh, what? They, they don't put so much blood in it. Is, is this Joseph coat um, daddy or not? He, he can't hardly see his eyes are dim. And he knew it and said, it is my son's coat. And evil beasts have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. Now, you, of course, he's, you know, he's alive. They're just lying to his father. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. Now, how can you as a child sit back or, you know, not a child, these are young men, sit back and watch your father, old as he is, cry for many days and not feel nothing? Now, do y'all see where we come from? We come from some hellacious, hell-raising, lying, backstabbing, cheating tribes of Israel. <laughs> they were doing the same thing way back then. And in today's time, you know, people just don't too much have a conscience. No matter where you go, no matter what you do. Um, it, you know, I can name them all. I don't have time. Mechanics, they don't feel nothing. You know, they don't have that. The love is not there. Um, restaurants, you know, it's, it's pitiful. The young kids working in the restaurant, you know, they don't care. They really don't care. I'd rather have 50-year-old plus people working in restaurants. I really would because you know your food is going to be right and it's going to be good. Either them or Mexicans that, that's really, really seeking the American dream, then you got some. But if you put black folks and white folks in a restaurant, all you got is a bunch of cackling hens and greedy, greedy, y'all know what, okay? That's what you got. Cackling hens and greedy, you know what, folks. All right, here it goes. And, um, and so he's crying for many days, his father. 
And all his sons and his daughters rose up to comfort him. Ah, right, come on, y'all. But he refused to be confident, of course. You know, that's just all there is to it. And he said, for I will go down into the grave unto, the, un, unto my son mourning. I'm going to die mourning over my son. And his father wept for him. He's still crying. And um, the Midianites sold Joseph into Egypt unto Potiphar, and, um, an officer of uh, Pharaoh and, and captain of the guard. So God is orchestrating a, divi a divine plan all the way down the line, okay? Now, what's happening is that Joseph is finally sold into Egypt. We know the story. Go down, Moses, tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, now we're going to get into the story of Judah and Tamar. And, um, and uh, Tamar is, is, is going to trick old Judah and go out and dress up like one of them. Them girls, you know, them pole risers, you know, them pole swingers. And she's going to go out and dress up and wrap herself up like that. You can read the story on your own, but this is not my point. This is not where I'm going right here. And Judah is going into town, and she's going to set him up and everything else and, and get a little smooch off of him. And, um, and then get a little baby coming there, and she's going to, put the trick out there and say, leave your cane or your umbrella, whatever it is that you got, and he's going to leave that bracelet at the sign there. And I'll read a little bit of it because I don't want to deal with this um, for too long, okay? And uh, if you just look in, in uh, verse number 38, it came to pass, chapter number 1, chapter number 38, verse number 1, and it came to pass that at the time that Judah went down from his brother and turned in, to a certain Adullamite whose name was Hira. And Judah saw uh, there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in unto her, and she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Ur. And she conceived again a son, and called his name Onan. And she conceived again and bare a son in Shelah. And, and, uh, and he was at Shazab. And Judah took a wife for Ur, and Firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, I think I got the story mixed up a little bit here. Ur, firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and God slew him. Now, what did God do? God killed the firstborn Ur because he's, he's slick. And Judah said unto Onan, Go unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed unto her. But Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass that when he went into his brother's wife, he spilled his seed. Now, this is a this is kind of rated X, so we're not going to talk about this too much. I just want to get it right a little bit, okay? Kind of rated X, and he's getting the smooch, and y'all know this story, okay? And, and he don't let the smooch go where it's supposed to go. The seed is supposed to go to the canal and to the birth of promise, but he didn't do that, and he took all those millions of children, and he threw them on the ground. And God didn't like that. God said, you're going to kill those children and throw them on the ground? i get rid of you. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. So God, God killed Ur, and uh, God killed Odad, okay? And I read this before. And then Judah, uh, it then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, remain a widow at their father's house till uh, Shelah, my son, is be grown, lest peradventure he died. And, uh, trying to save Tamar at the time, so I want to make sure I get the story right. And in the process of time, here it is. The daughter of Shunan, Judah's wife, died, and Judah was comforted and went up unto his sheep shares with Timnath and his friend Hira in Adul the Adulamite. Here it comes. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father in law goeth up to Timnath to share his shears. And she went, and, and this is the father in law, and she went and put on her garments off of her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself up. And sat in the open place by the way, Tim not, for she knew that Shelah. So it's Shelah and, and Tamar, not Judah. It's, it's all family related here. And she saw that uh, Shelah was grown and, and she was not given unto him a wife. Now, this is getting really interesting, folks. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be a harlot. I see, I about got it right then, didn't I? 
<laughs> okay, in verse number 15. When Judah saw it, he thought uh, her to be a harlot because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's some stuff getting set up there. See, he knew that he was not his daughter-in-law because if he did, he wouldn't have smoosed her. All right? This is why you don't go around smooching the in-law and stuff like that. But it don't matter in today's time. Uh, what would thou give? And she said, what would thou give? So she's going to set him up. All right? Got it right the first time. And um, he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, would thou give me a pledge till thou send it? And watch what happens. What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, thy signet and thy bracelet and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it her. And came in unto her, and she conceived by him. So she done set him up. She done got pregnant. Now, why she want to do all this crazy to me? But she done got pregnant, and now she got all of his little stuff that he done left her, his little trinkets and stuff, and she's going to bring that out later on, okay? And to make a long story short, in verse um, number 24, and it came to pass about three months after that it was told Judah, saying, Tomorrow thy daughter-in-law have played the harlot, and also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth, and, and let her be burnt. Well, you were the one burning a man. <laughs> you were the one getting the smooch. <laughs> Come on, Judah, black man. Here it is. And when she brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man who these are, am I with child? And she said, discern, I pray thee, whose are these? The signet, the bracelet, and the staff. That's why you got to be careful, man, what you give the woman for Christmas. <laughs> you know, you get a smooch and pay for it. You better not leave no gold or no silver. You better leave cash. That way she can spend it. She can't blame the money on you. She can blame it on the sunshine. She can blame it on the moonlight. Ow! She can blame it on the good time. Don't blame it on Scotty. Oh! And knowing I was guilty. Here it is. <laughs> it's just funny. I've read this a million times. And um, not a million, but almost uh, close to whatever. When she brought forth and she sent me saying, look, discern that. And Judah acknowledged them. He's saying, you caught me. Well, what does all this got to do with living with loving me? Why did she go and do all of that? <clears throat> to keep it all in the family? Of course, wanted to stay covenantly connected, wanted to be a part of it all. You see, many women will use a child to trap a man, even if they don't want the man. They'll use the child to trap the man, to keep the man for a season. Then when the child get grown, they'll dump the man and then go find the man that they really want. I done seen many of them do that. I heard many of them say, as soon as my child finish high school, as soon as my children get out of school, I'm getting a divorce. Same, I, I mean, I know because stuff happened to me like that. That's exactly what happened. As soon as the child get up, get out of high school, go get the paper, sign the paper, leave you, and go and be with the in-laws. That's the real deal, folks. It's true. And um, I done seen many women even counsel them. I'm leaving him as soon as, 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 as they finish high school. My children get grown. I am gone, Pastor. I am not staying there with him. And you know what they do? They leave. They leave. You know, and some left good men, good men taking care of them. But they, they found another. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ha, ha! Y'all know how that go. Come on now. And I, this is not my story here, but I'm just, I'm just enjoying reading, talking to y'all while we're talking about living with love in me. And what would make a beautiful woman dress up and do that. There's something in her mentally. Something is missing. See, some people want children so bad until they'll, they'll go and lay down with anybody just to have a child, and it shouldn't be that way. And, and she brought it forth, and, and he acknowledged. Now, he wants to go and kill her. We need to burn her. We need to stone her. Wait a minute, man. You need to be stoned with her because you was the one that got your pecker all hard and everything else and wanted to hit it, quit it, then forget it. No, you got locked in with it. And so now you got to stick there. And that's just all there is to it. So Judah said, okay, it's me. And, um, 
and I, I'm the one, and, and she's been more righteous than I am. And um, he goes on and say, all right, well, we'll just have to do the right thing. And um, let's just finish the rest of them, read and finish it up. And Judah acknowledged them and said, she have been more righteous than I. In verse number 26, uh, Genesis 38. And I, and, and then I, because that I gave her not to uh, Shelah, my son, and he knew her again no more. Okay? And, uh, but first of all, man, you ain't got no business messing with nobody that your son messed with anyway, but this way back then. So you're dealing with a whole different line of thing, a whole different mindset, okay? Uh, and so you, you, you don't touch that. You don't do that. And, you know, a real man, let me go ahead and say it now and get it all out the way because you need to hear this, man. A real man is not going to touch any woman that his brothers have touched. Oh, y'all missed that one, didn't you? A real man is really not going to even go and touch a woman that his cousin and first cousin done smooshed up. <laughs> He's not going to do it. Now, the dog is going to go do that. The dog is going to do it. He's going to go behind his brother because he's a dog. A real woman, y'all hear me, is not going to go and mess with, do y'all hear me, her cousins. She's not going to be sleeping with her cousins. She's not going to be sleeping with her in-laws and brother-in-laws. A real woman is not going to do that. But a heiferized bitch woman will. She, she's she's, she's going to do just that. Why? Because she's a heiferized bitch woman. It, she, she's really a mental whore inside. Okay? Because only a heifer or a female bitch dog is going to go and sleep with other men that are in a family, in-laws and stuff like that. You don't do stuff like that. <laughs> you know, there was something that we, we was taught coming up. It, I, whatever, don't you, mess, don't you mess with no cousins and none of y'all. Don't you go messing with none of them. They're your cousins. They're your kid folks. You bring shame up on the family. Well, Prophet Joseph had been in everybody's family. My family, your family, we all done did it. Everybody done did something up in there. You know you got cousins that done smooch your cousin. You got sisters that done smooch brothers. Come on now, y'all. You got fathers that done mess with daughters sick. Mothers with sons sick. Y'all sick. God, that's creepy sick. Ah! Yuck! Yucky! Good Lord, yucky checky. Yuck! See, your mindset can't think that way. Me and your pecker ought to curl up. It ought to turn into a raisin and a prunes. You know, you ought to go from a golf ball to a prune to a raisin. Oh, no, uh-uh, no, man. Y'all sit up and hang like y'all the Empire State Building. I got a smooch coming here. <laughs> you crazy, man. Come on now. Let me finish this up and get this out of the way because I really don't like this at all. And, um, and in closing this part, we're going to close out and we're going to get back on the other good stuff tomorrow. But I'm just taking you through the story because we're getting ready to climax living with loving me. So we're going to close out with Joseph. In the last verses, Captain here, and it came to pass when she uh, uh, travailed that the one put out his hand and the midwife uh, took and bound up uh, his hand in scarlet thread and saying, uh, this is the first. And it came to pass as she drew back his hand that, behold, the brother came out and she said, how hast thou broken forth this breach? Be upon thee, therefore his name was called uh, Perez. And afterward came out his brother and that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zerah. So Zerah was trying to come out first, and him and his brothers in there wrestling over who's going to be the first one to come out. So when Zerah's hand come out, she tied a little thread on it, put it back in there. He goes back in there, his brother beat him up and hit him in the nose. His brother stick his head and out, I'm coming out first. And so he comes out first. And so it's all good. But... Next, we're going to look at living with loving me and see what it means to walk in integrity and to be able to walk upright before God and not to let the flesh get a hold of you. Joseph is about to come in contact with Pharaoh's, uh, with Pontiphar's wife. And you know, from, from what it was, you know, she was a bad woman back then. But we'll pick this up tomorrow night. And uh, that's just all there is to it. And, and see how this works out. But we're just talking through it. 
And um, this is the week of the birthday boy. And so we're going to move forward and thank you for tuning in and thank you, all of you for the celebration and the love that you have shown me and the support, Captain and the crew, all the people who have sent gifts and blessed the prophet. I thank you for it. The anointing and the blessing of God is upon you. You are highly favored. I wish I could minister to y'all, but I tell you like this right here, keep on trucking because the best is yet to come. That's my time. Thank you for yours. I'll see you guys on tomorrow night. This is Living With Loving Me. Y'all have a good night. Bye.